It is time to talk some bracketology. And bracketology coverage only means one thing. March is approaching. We are exactly 14 days away from Selection Sunday, as today is February 26th. And what a day we had in college basketball yesterday. And some great college basketball today as well. That's going to have a huge impact on the bubble race. Now, I have printed off the list of Jerry Palm's bubble teams right now. As of his last update, his bubble teams are as follows. Auburn, Memphis, Rutgers, Oklahoma State, Boise State, Michigan, Mississippi State, North Carolina, New Mexico, Penn State, Seton Hall, USC, Utah State, Wake Forest, West Virginia, and Wisconsin. But a dramatic February 25th in college basketball really has a lot of potential to shake up the bubble rankings when it's all said and done, as what happened today could be a fraction of the difference between teams being in and left out of the field. As we still have a lot to go in these remaining 14 days until the committee releases their bracket. But I just want to talk about some of the key moments from yesterday. Oklahoma State was one of the first four out in in Joe Lenardi's mind. And they had an opportunity to pick up a big win today. And they fell short. They have lost four games in a row. Mississippi State, they were one of the first four out in Lenardi's mind. But they picked up a very big win against Texas A&M, a top 25 team. And that probably propels them into that last four in. But what's unique about all these different bracketologists out there is they may have certain thoughts, but we truly don't know what the committee has on their minds. We don't know what is on their mind until the bracket reveal. North Carolina, they picked up a very clutch win today against Virginia as North Carolina was on the outside looking in going into this week. But a win against Virginia, that could give them some momentum going into next week's games and the ACC tournament. For North Carolina to ultimately guarantee their spot in the in the tournament. Although I'm going to say this, though, in just a moment here. But realistically, what North Carolina has to do is beat Duke next Saturday. Well, this upcoming Saturday, because it is Sunday morning when I'm recording this. Well, it's late Saturday, early Sunday. Depending on how you want to look at it. Beat Duke on Saturday. That's going to give them a big win. And also win against Florida State, who Florida State, they picked up a big win against Miami, really sabotaging Miami's tournament bid a little bit. They're they're a lock in the tournament, but they probably knocked Miami down a seed line. So beat Florida State, beat Duke. And I'd say win about two games in the ACC tournament. If they can win two games make the semifinals in the ACC conference room, I think North Carolina is in. But I will say this. North Carolina, I think, is going to be in no matter what. And I'm not and I'm not bothered by them being 0-9 in quad one as far as them being in. I feel like the committee is going to let North Carolina no matter what. Because if you look at it, North Carolina, I think, is going to benefit from... Blue blood privilege. With North Carolina being a blue blood, it would not be good for the tournament to leave out any blue bloods. So I think North Carolina gets in no matter what happens. But to really lock themselves in, beat Florida State on Monday, and then beat Duke on Saturday, then win one game or two to get in. But I just think as long as North Carolina beats Florida State, I think they really should be in. Because 
this North Carolina team, I feel like, is too talented to not win at least one or two games in this ACC tournament. I get that they have struggled throughout the year, but they were struggling last year as well, and we saw them go on a run in March and go all the way to the championship game. And if a couple things go differently in the championship game, they are the national champions. But the championship game didn't go their way. New Mexico, on the outside looking in, maybe to some bracketologist, just hanging on by a threat. They had an opportunity to have a big win against San, San Diego State, but they lost at the buzzer. A lot of buzzer beaters today. Florida State beat Miami on a buzzer beater. Arizona State joins the party as they upset Arizona on a buzzer beater. USC's won four in a row. USC, I think, is going to find their way in this tournament. If they can beat Arizona on Thursday, I believe it is, then I think USC is a lock for the tournament. But the Big Ten has a big day of basketball here. Rutgers, Michigan, Penn State, Wisconsin. They are all on Jerry Palm's bubble. They are bubble teams. And today, just like yesterday, is going to have a big impact on the tournament shuffling going into the final week of the regular season as the smaller conferences begin conference tournament play this upcoming week. It's the final week of the regular season of the power conferences. Rutgers goes on the road to Penn State, and Wisconsin goes on the road against Michigan. Now, for Wisconsin-Michigan to get in, the winner of that game, I think for them to get in the tournament, they would have to win their remaining games and then win two games in the Big Ten tournament to get in. I think if either Michigan or Wisconsin wins a few games in the Big Ten conference tournament, if they make it to the semifinals, I think they're in. Rutgers Rutgers was feeling pretty safe a couple weeks ago, but now not so much. It's looking like they could fall into that first four once again, if not miss the tournament completely. Penn State, they're a team that I think by the end of this, they will probably end up being out or one of the last four in because I I do believe that there is a lot of biases here with the tournament committee. As I mentioned, blue blood privilege of North Carolina. I think if the last spot came down to a come down to North Carolina or let's just say Memphis, as Memphis, they are a bubble team, despite not being one of Jerry Palm's bubble teams. They're a bubble team in the eyes of Joe Lenardi. If it came down to them in that scenario, I feel like they would give the nod to North Carolina just because of blue blood privilege. And I think they also favor, without a doubt, they do favor the big time conference. As we saw last year, Michigan made it in where a lot of us thought they didn't deserve it. But of course, they proved us wrong and won a couple games. That typically happens whenever we see a team that we feel like doesn't deserve to be in it, or at least the majority of us feel like they don't deserve to be in it. They tend to win a couple games and go on a run. We saw Michigan do it last year. We saw Syracuse do it a few years ago. I believe one of those years, Syracuse made it to the Final Four. So it is going to be an exciting fight to the finish. And I do want to acknowledge Joe Lenardi's bubble teams here. As his last four in are Pittsburgh, Nevada, Memphis, and West Virginia. West Virginia, they had an opportunity to boost their resume today, but they fell just short to defending champions, Kansas. The last four in, Oklahoma State, USC, Wisconsin, and Mississippi State. And I do believe that I may have accidentally said that Oklahoma State was on the outside looking in in the eyes of Lenardi, and to apologize for that. As looking at Palms and Lenardi's, Little bit little bit mix up there, but I do apologize. But Oklahoma State, opportunity to boost up the resume. They fell short. 
Last four, first four out, excuse me, and Corey Lenardi, Wisconsin, Mississippi State, Penn State, Utah State. But later today, Wisconsin and Penn State, they will have opportunities to boost up their resume. A Penn State loss, and I do think that it's going to really hinder their chances a lot to get into this tournament. I feel like for Penn State, if they lost to Rutgers today, they would fall to a record of 17 and 12. Which is, when you're looking at 11, 12 losses, 11, 12, 13 losses, you're in the danger zone. You've got to prove yourself in conference tournament play. And the Big Ten, it's always a stat conference. But we'll see if the committee favors a Big Ten team again this year like they did last year with Michigan. Next four out, Texas Tech, which they have been climbing up lately. They've been getting better. But they had an opportunity to boost the resume today, but they fell just short. Clemson, Michigan, which they'll have an opportunity to boost the resume later today against Wisconsin in what's going to be a must-watch game as both teams run the bubble. And New Mexico. New Mexico, as I said earlier, had an opportunity to get a big win against the 22nd-ranked San, Jose, San Diego State, but they fell just short. So that will do it for my Bracketology coverage. I'm planning on doing another Bracketology video next Saturday. Well, this Saturday now is Sunday. After the final regular season game is complete. Well, technically, the Big Ten will have games on Sunday and a couple other conferences I imagine would have games. So I plan on being back here next Saturday on Saturday for bracketology coverage. And then I'll probably do maybe a final one, maybe the Thursday or Friday or Saturday before the bracket reveal. I want to try Thursday or Friday, but if not, look for it Saturday night. But that's all I have. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, have a great day and take care.